Well, any city of 200,000 or more people is sure to have its fair share of talent. And that's true in refugee camps like Dadav. I spoke about that with Joel Hangi, director of Refugee Artists and Authors, a youth organization in the Kakuma refugee camp, also in Kenya. I asked her about fostering talent while in the camp. The refugee artists and authors itself is all about supporting each other within the community. We understand that we are not able to do uh, big things, but with the little things that we have, the talent that I have personally, for example, I can sing, if someone else can write, if someone else maybe can dance. So you understand that you have already, we have already something, we have tools, but people were just sitting down and waiting for it so that they can showcases showcase what they have so it's something that motivated me a lot to come up with that organization so that we can support each other and showcase what we have uh, around the world and you're certainly talking about something that also the world economic forum is focusing on they're saying that there's huge talent in the world's refugee camps and they say we must realize this overlooked potential. But on the ground, what are some of the, the policy and some of the practical barriers that make that a challenge? Yeah, of course, you know, once you are, you are living in a re refugee camp or something like crisis set up, it's a little, you are like under some rules and regulations whereby you have to follow, uh, though you, are, you agree on, with it or not, you have to follow those rules. And then so far with the talents that we have around, like for youth as well as potential people who are able or entrepreneurs or people who have uh, like qualification, well-educated people, we, we are facing so many challenges because of the rules and regulations in terms of you can't move, in terms of we, we, we are not allowed to work officially, like we don't have work permits. So it's very hard for us to compete uh, with the people living in, like for, for the host countries uh, or the host community. So it's very hard. I also want to talk about the Dabs camp. Um, help us understand the real impact of that camp on the country. Like the host community, just they don't take it like an advantage for them. It's normally been seen like it's now a, another challenge, how they manage those people. Maybe, and then that's the case of maybe Al-Shabaab and all. So it's very hard, but for, on my side, I, I, I take it like an ad advantage for that country, because uh, so far they come up with, you know, it's, it can boost their, 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 their economy so far, because so far in Kakuma, we have, uh, we have a program for World, world uh, Food Program, which uh, provide some voucher like money in terms of money to refugee. And then that's, that's money just circulates around the, ca the country, which is a benefit for that country, like which is a benefit to add value on the, whatever they can be doing. It's a lot of money. So it can add like value economy. It can give people like new jobs. So I don't think it's if they should always take it in a negative way, they should also see in the other angle and try to deliberate about that. And the data certainly support, supports that even though there can be higher upfront costs when welcoming a refugee population, the long-term economic benefits do show that more refugees actually do yeah. bring a bigger economic impact. So knowing that, though, and, and knowing the difference between the optics of, of often what's presented about a migrant population, how can governments, NGOs, and private companies really work together to, to tap into this potential? Uh, so far, there is some programs that uh, set up in the camp uh, through different organizations. And then uh, it can be through mentorship, it can be through different programs for, for like, train refugees to be self-reliant, especially when it comes, to, for it comes to entrepreneurship. So it's something that allows refugee or people to come up with their own ideas, new innovation ideas, so that they can come up come up with different activities which can generate uh, a source of income for them. At the same time, it's boost the economy of the, the host community. And what role do you see technology playing, not just in getting people reacclimated, but really tapping into the potential that you see in these refugee camps as well? Uh, through technology, people are now doing amazing things around. And then people are not, people are just able, you know, once you are a refugee, you are, 
a kind of hopeless. You don't know what is the future. You don't know what what will be able to do in the future. But with the, the presence of technology in the camp, with the support of some donors around who can emphasize on the technology, you understand that we 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 have people who can pursue their their, their education and then get some degrees or bachelor or PhD while they are just here. So through online, people are able to get, like to be educated. And then from there, people are able to work. And then apart from that, for those who will be going for resettlement, for example, for the third country, for those who will be going back, uh, the repatriation in their countries, you understand that it will be very easy for, that, for them to catch up with and continue with, with the life because they, are, they have already have a baseline or uh, like for those who have been educated, they have some somewhere to start from. And then that's my case. I came here just having like a high education, high, high school certificates, but by now I'm able to, I, I came from a French country and then now um, I, I joined uh, university, I, I learned online in English. So you understand that technology is really playing a major role in uh, in Kakuma.